Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at the serverside.com and I want to take you through the process of creating a simple Java web application and then deploying it in an embedded WebSphere Liberty server. So I've got Eclipse open here. Take a look at the version. I believe it's Oxygen that I'm running. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a new Maven project. And I'm just going to create a very basic simple Maven project that is based on the web app archetype. I'm going to be using a, a fairly up-to-date version of, of Wildfly of Liberty, um, but I'm just going to create GSP, so I'm not going to worry about using the latest servlet-based technology. And so I'll click Next. I'll be asked what I want is the group ID, which I'll put com.mcnz.liberty tutorial. I'm going to make the artifact ID open liberty. Why not? And for the version I'm just going to put in example. I think I might trim down that final package name there. But I think all of that looks good. Now as the application opens up it's it's going to look for a Java EE or Java web runtime just for it to be able to link to. I got a Wildfly server configured on my local machine so I'm just going to set up Wildfly. You can see it's right there on my C drive. Underscore Wildfly. I'm just going to set that up as a, a basic engine that I can link to at design time because initially I was getting errors on my JSP just because it doesn't know Right now the project doesn't know how to resolve things like HTTP servlet. You can see that error there. I don't know what the HTTP servlet is. And so by adding that Wildfly environment and just saying, hey, let the compiler link to it at uh, runtime. I think I do that Java build path, add the library, and the server runtime. Wildfly. So I didn't really need to do this, but this is going to stop a little design time compile error from showing up. I think it still barks at me a little bit here, but that's nothing to worry about. Now, I'm not going to be doing any crazy servlet and JSP stuff, but uh, I do want to deploy a JSP, and to make sure that a JSP is deployed, you want to have some Java code in there. And so if I run this application, it prints out the date where it says new java.util.date. I know that things are working, so I'll say if this prints the date, it's working. Okay, so now I've got, I mean, the world's simplest web-based application, but it is a, a servlet JSP-based application because it does have a JSP in it. So the question is, what do I have to do now in order to get this to be packaged in a standalone WebSphere Liberty jar file? Well, I'm going to go to the palm. I think I'll trim out that build part there. I don't need the URL, and I don't think I need uh, any dependencies right now, to be quite frank. I think I'll change the name to Embedded WebSphere Liberty. It's actually open liberty. I shouldn't say WebSphere Liberty, but I'm going to leave that in for now. But what I want to be worried about is how this application builds. So I'm going to look at the build segment of Maven. I'm going to add some plugins. And the first plugin that I want to add is one for the Maven War generation. And so there's a, a Maven War plugin. I'm going to do some source format that a little bit just so it looks handsome. But I've put in the Maven War plugin, the latest that I could find, 322. Um, I put a setting in here, fail on missing web XML and made that false. Now I have an XML because this is kind of a, an older structure to the project, but um, a lot of the modern web Java applications don't have a uh, web.xml file, so I'm going to leave that in there. I want this to be a trim as trim as possible XML file, but I think a lot of people will actually want to see that because they'll have modern, you know, version three, version four, servlet applications in them. 
But that puts the makes my Maven War plugin available. Um, but more importantly than the Maven War plugin is the actual Liberty Maven plugin, and that's the one I'm going to add subsequently. And you can see here with this plugin, source format, you can see the whole plugin there. Now I just changed my font a little bit, so everything's a little bit bigger. Hopefully it doesn't make it too difficult to see, but you can see the whole plugin here. But this is the Liberty Maven plugin. 242 is the latest version that I can find. Uh, we're going to pull down version 18 of WebSphere Liberty. And when we deploy the application, we're going to package Liberty and the application all up in a single jar file called embeddedliberty.jar. That'll be in the, the target folder that Maven creates. It's going to be a runnable jar and a few other settings, not a loose application, installed project packages. And so that's the heart of the configuration. That makes the Maven plugin available and, and ready to work. And specifically, when we go through a couple of Maven phases and when we do the prepare package phase, we're going to actually install Liberty, create a server, install the features that are required. That's going to be like the EJB feature, the JAX RS feature, whatever I need at runtime. Um, and then once all that's done, we're going to install the current application in there and package it all together into that jar file. And so this is the heart of the configuration of WebSphere Liberty and creating an executable jar file. And so with that created, all I have to do is open up a terminal where my POM is. You can just see, I've just opened up a terminal here where that POM file is. And I'm going to specify, I'm actually going to look at my target folder. There's nothing there. I'm going to say Maven clean install. And that install triggers the compile test and package phases. And it's the prepare package and package phase that the interesting stuff happens in. Right now it's going to go and try and pull down WebSphere Liberty. You see it doing that, 18.2, 18.0.0.2. And all of a sudden that is completed. And if I refresh over here on target, you'll see that I've got a couple of files. One is embeddedliberty.jar. The other one is open liberty example. Open liberty example is the name of the war file, right? Based on this information here, open liberty version is example. Um, but this embedded liberty jar file is what I'm really interested in. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to say open with now show in terminal do a little dir command. You can see that's a, a fairly big file, 122, so that's, that's quite a bit. But I can just run this file, java jar embedded liberty dot jar, click enter. That jar file is now going to run like a standalone application. It's going to deploy liberty and it's also going to deploy the application that I just created. Open Liberty onto that Liberty server. You can see right here it says open on localhost 9080. By the way, make sure when it does an extraction, it extracts into your uh, usernames, temporary user folders. If you've got a space in your name, like Maven space user or something, it's going to die out when it tries to do the, the run. So make sure there's no spaces in your, your username. Um, but right now it's running on localhost 9080. Uh, that's a little different, not 8080. Open liberty dash, dash example. Uh, and I sh if I go there, I should be able to find that index.jsp. So here we go. Localhost colon 9080 slash open liberty example. Index.jsp just to confirm. And you can see that it's now saying, hello world, printing out the time and the date according to the JSP that I originally wrote. And so there you go. That's all there is to working with WebSphere, or should I say Open Liberty, um, taking Open Liberty, packaging Open Liberty in an executable jar file, and then having an application deployed on it. And the next step, export it to Docker. You've got yourself a microservice.